Let me take you through how a distributed query actually works in Fire. So I prepared this example query. What we're doing is we're scanning through tables A and B. We're doing an equality join on A dot A equals B dot B. We're aggregating by A dot C. And finally, we're projecting that aggregated A dot C columns as well as the sum over one of the columns in B. And the big challenge for a system like Firebolt now is taking this query, optimizing it, and breaking it down into smaller pieces, which can be scheduled across the cluster. And let's quickly talk about the cluster or your engine in Firebolt. So in this case, we have a four node engine. Okay? This means there's actually four physical EC2 instances which are going to power your query. And at the bottom of the stack, you have AWS S3, right? And if you're durable, object storage, meaning at rest, all your data is stored there. And then as you bring up your compute resources, decouple storage and compute, this data will be loaded onto your actual disks on the machines. And in this case here, we basically have three, five, seven, nine files loaded across the four nodes in the cluster. Nodes one to three have two files loaded, node four, as three files loaded. And all of this data is stored in our proprietary file format called triple F. Perfect. And so now the first thing we will do is we'll start table scans. Okay? And this means each node will start reading from the local files, relations A and B, and start processing. And now the big challenge, of course, in distributed query processing is how do we get this join, right? This join of A dot A equals B dot B to actually scale out across the cluster. And the thing that powers this entire bolt is something we call shuffle. And what shuffle effectively does is it hash partitions your data across the cluster and can then make your distributed operations completely local. So let me take you through an example, right? Say we have the following two rows in A. Uh, so we have our relation A, columns A dot A, and then columns A dot C, we will need later. And let's insert some sample values. Say for B, where we need B dot B and B dot D for the sum later. Okay, cool. When we're doing the join, what we want now is that the following drop rows get matched together. So we want this 10 to find this 10 in B dot B. We want this 5 to find this 5 in B dot B. And both the 9 and the 7 are not going to have a joint partner. Awesome. And so the cool trick now is in order to be able to scale out across the cluster for this join, we can basically take the hash of A dot A and take it modulo of 4. So this will then give me numbers between 0 and 3. And each time I get a 0, I will send the row to node 1. Each time I get 2, I will send the row to node 3, and so on, right? And if I do the same thing with, with the column B dot B, then after partitioning, according to this function, the rows which are supposed to be joined actually are co-located on the same node. So what's happening is, each node starts scanning the triple F files it has loaded locally, and then it starts shuffling. So it kind of has this all to all communication where it takes the potentially billions upon billions of rows from these two tables, hash partitions them by A dot A and B dot B, and in the end, everything will end up, kind of all joint partners will end up on the same node. So for example, after the shuffling, right, and kind of each node really sends to each node, I don't want to draw all of the arrows, what you'll have is, for example, here, this row, say, goes to node 2, and this row would also go to node 2, because both have the value 10, they are partitioned by the same function, so they end up on the same node. 
And this way, we spread all data evenly across the cluster, and we can do a join in a completely local way. So at the end of this query, we do an aggregation by a.c. And now we do the same thing again. But this, this time, we partition by a.c. So in this kind of final stage of the query, we would compute after the local join the hash on a.c, take it again in module 4, and now all the rows which are supposed to be aggregated end up on the same node, get aggregated locally, and we return the correct result. Um, yeah, and so this is how we're able to make a query scale out, and this works for a lot of things. Kind of, this works for joins, this works for aggregations, this works for uh, windows with partition by. Uh, the kind of underlying thing which powers distributed queries is always the shuffle layer, which tries to take your distributed data set, chart it depending on the columns and operations you're using in the query, and then performs local computation, uh, and then kind of combines the results in the end. So we now know how we're able to scale out across the cluster for queries with joins, aggregations, and pretty much any shape you want. Uh, the important thing, however, is we need the engine to be blazing fast, right? Kind of your queries should come back as fast as possible. And for this, we really need the different layers of the system to kind of interact and work well together. And what I want to show you is how this works coupled with the sparse indexes that Firebolt has. So I talked earlier about this proprietary triple F file format, and I want to go into depth and tell you more um, about what's actually going on here. Um, awesome. And so, right, in this query here, where we join the full table A on the full table B, uh, there's really not a lot of data we can prove. We need to read the entire table, because any row might find a joint partner, and in the end, make it into the final aggregation. However, for a lot of the queries, uh, this doesn't have to be the case, right? You might, for example, have a filter here where a.a .A equals b.b .B and let's say a dot name equals Benjamin. And in this case, we can use the additional predicates in order to actually scan less data. And in our triple F file format, we have multiple different types of indexes actually built in natively. And what happens in this case is for this initial table scan on A, when we read the table from the local SSD after loading it from S3, we can actually kind of restrict the range of our scan. So if we, for example, have the sort key in the triple F file on the username, we would be able to say, okay, out of these like hundreds of gigabytes of data maybe that we have locally kind of on a single node, actually only these small parts qualify. So we might see, okay, here's a few rows that qualify. Here's a few rows that qualify. And with the way our file format is built, we actually then only start scanning those. And this of course directly impacts the query performance. We spend much less time reading and this is even more important, we also spend much less time shuffling data around. So this means once we get to the join and to sending data over the network, repartitioning to do local joins, actually you will send almost nothing over the network. And this is one of the cases where really the different layers of our system play together very nicely. If we push down our scans into the storage layer, scan less data, and then have this really fast shuffle layer, which can do processing. 